So I know uh, mental health is a topic that I love talking about. However, I see that as aspiring mental health professionals, our mental health is something that we don't take care of on a regular basis. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes, yes ma'am. You know, so my goal today would be, while everything sounds very fancy, how is it that we can take care of our mental health? Because, you know, till we don't take care of ourselves, we can never ever talk about um, anything convincingly. You know, you've all heard the term that the therapist is a little psycho in the head. Have you all heard yes or no? <laughs> so, so, so the real reason for that is because, you know, we neglect to take care of ourselves. So since all of you here, most of you from what ma'am told me are psychology students and uh, some of you of course are interested in the human mind which I think is good enough to start off and uh, I'm going to talk about some practical tips. I am going to uh, have a street from my book also which is there. So if later on when you all are budding practitioners you can actually use it as a resource tool. You know how to get people to identify certain patterns that they don't talk about. Now. Uh, Think of some situation in your life where you felt that it was very, very tough for you. Take a minute and if you all are open, we'll talk about it. But think of one situation in your life where you felt that, you know, things are absolutely impossible to manage and, you know, uh, everything will go haywire. Thought of something? Mm. But later on you realize that while it was really horrible at that time, the fact that you're sitting here in front of me today means somewhere you're alive and you uh, came out of it, you know, unscathed. Perhaps a little bruised here and there, but more or less you managed. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma so, so for me, when we talk of therapy, the reason why people struggle is because they feel that, uh, uh, you know, difficult situations should not happen. Now in COVID, all of you who are here, Everybody's like, we should not have anxiety. I don't know if you were so hard on yourself, but most of the time, so we get anxious about anxiety. Yes or no? Yes. Now, here, till you don't understand that anxiety is normal, anxiety disorder is not normal, what's going to happen is you're going to be a therapist who's preaching, but is actually not following anything. And that's the reason why there are so many therapist jokes, because most of us feel we have pearls of wisdom to impart another, but we need not do anything. My life is absolutely sorted. My relationships are very good. I know what's happening. I, I can see your teachers also grinning and I can see some of you also grinning. Because when, when we do that, you know, what we do is we stop living. We start existing. We kind of, you know, that pitfall that we want to save others from, we actually fall into it. And, and today my endeavor would be as we talk, uh, and that will uh, take the books around, is for you to understand that till you do not acknowledge that yes, feelings hurt, they are messy, they are dirty. And sometimes yes, you also go psycho in certain situations for want of a better word. But how does it matter? What really is important is what are you doing in the current state? And my approach, especially after COVID was like everybody suddenly thought it was fashionable to have a therapist. You know, that come, uh, and people were calling, uh, calling uh, locally, nationally, internationally, because suddenly it was like, yeah, I have a mental health problem. I remember my daughter who was preparing for college, like you girls, she's like, mom, I'm so anxious, how will I study? I said, you're not a sociopath, of course you will be anxious. You have four grandparents who are on the other side of 70, and anyone could cop it with all the news which comes. You have your board exams to give. And every day they are shifting boards. They're saying it will happen, it will not happen. You have colleges to apply to. So why wouldn't you be anxious? She said, that's a very weird thing for someone who's a psychologist to say, really mom, <laughs> you're just supposed to tell me that, you know, no, no, it's okay, don't be anxious. She said, here I'm getting anxious about my anxiety. What a stupid thing you're telling me. I said, no, think about it very objectively. If I was 18 and when I thought I would be having fun with my friends and getting ready, I will not be going for my last uh, farewell to the school. I'm not hanging around with my friends. Uh, so, you know, anxiety is normal, but it need not be a disorder. But we need to make that space where functioning will get impacted. You know, where you probably would have done a little better. Now you can't do it because your resources are getting compromised. And that's the reason why I wanted all of you to think about it. You know, don't be harsh on yourself. 
because what we bring to the table is just ourselves as a blank canvas and we can't do that till we are honest about what is pitching what's really not working well right now and when things are not working well that means somewhere i need to be kind to myself and we forget that would you all agree yes or no yes, yes ma'am ma because we are so busy and you know while life psychology is a fun subject to study there's so much to learn you know theoretically and some of you who are studying abnormal this is a masters class right ma'am so there are masters ba yeah so some of you uh, will be uh, i think uh, specializing with uh, clinical psychology some would be doing counseling some would be doing industrial and especially with abnormal psychology i don't know if it happens with you all when i was reading the dsm i thought i had all the symptoms <laughs> i i could diagnose myself with everything that is there so what we need to realize that in our quest to become somebody we stop enjoying the moment we stop thinking about what is it that i'm celebrating at this point and what is really pinching at this point and for me good mental health is essentially just these two realizations on a daily basis okay this is going really well and this is this really sucks for want of a better word and this is something which is very blah so if if i can get into that mode you know like i think the best part of training to be a psychologist is you get that tool to explore your own mind but for me for that tool to really work you need to be very kind to yourself and sometimes it's about facing your own demons sometimes also understanding that certain things just don't work in you but do i want to play the blame game that is something i want you all to really think about so uh while of course uh, we will talk a little bit in more detail about the book and i'll show you some of the concepts that you read about like uh, all of you have heard of carl rogers i'm assuming here everybody's heard yes ma'am yeah so 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 when he talks about uh, being the person that uh, you can be you know but when i read that book for me it was very very transformational but i said how does one become that have you all read that book his uh, book i recommend all of you read it uh, i'm sure ma'am you have it in the library or it is there on becoming a person i urge you all to read that book it will transform the way you look at psychology you know it because he talks about his experiences and how people just want to be heard so i want uh, everybody to take a minute and uh, think about it he every day the whole competition is just with yourself not with anybody else and sometimes it's just about allowing yourself to even deteriorate you know most of us are very hard on ourselves when things don't work for us you know we feel he i ought to do the best i need to do that now if you don't learn that basic kindness to yourself now when you are sitting across the table with someone you will come across as very condescending you will come across as someone who shows that oh i know it all you know i can fix you up and trust me no one likes that feeling the the, the thing is whenever i begin uh, therapy i actually uh, say a one line prayer you know that uh, thank you for trusting me enough or you know giving me an opportunity to be a change agent in your life so you need to begin from that spot of humility now you may say why is it important because you know uh, people can sense things while you study you studying psychology i have studied psychology everyone is but you know when we have that element of condi uh, session in us no, nobody wants to listen to us yes or no yes ma'am so 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 take a minute celebrate life i want you all to really think about you know what is it that you really like what is it that bothers you what is it that you are celebrating and uh, when are you condescending to someone because you, you need to catch these maggots in your head you know we all are condescending whether we agree or not we all are judgmental whether we agree or not we all are obnoxious and we all are manipulated the reason why i use these terms is because these are going to be your constant struggles on a daily basis and it's very easy to point out who is being manipulated with you but to acknowledge manipulation in ourselves okay. how i can be a liar is very very difficult so uh till you all don't do that you all will understand that you're not living life completely because we have these sides inside us some are good some are bad some are downright obnoxious and some of it is just very boring you know it doesn't make sense so we all like that uh, battle inside ourselves the real me versus the ideal me which goes on and on and on and on 
you know the only way to uh, transcend that is acknowledge all sides like my personal struggle was the word manipulation you know i used to hate it and i always had it that i hate manipulative people so every time i would try to look inwards where am i manipulated i like no nah, i'm not manipulated i talk so much of truth so it it was a very difficult struggle but till i did not identify it took me a few years but when i was specifically being manipulated i think i would keep getting bothered by manipulated people once i could identify it in myself maybe the degree was lesser or sometimes even more i did get so impacted by manipulated people it's like the noise we can all hear it's not nice but you want to listen to me so you are listening to me i want to talk so i'm talking to you otherwise i constantly get distracted by it or i can let it be yes it's irritating but it's not in my hands there is something else which is happening it probably needs to be done it doesn't make sense to me it's not fair if i have to talk to you it is happening but this is what life is so you know in every day also we learn to give ourselves that bandwidth because there is some noise i'll be slightly distracted i'll miss out on some words but overall the larger picture i will get so once we get that compassionate with ourselves and these disowned selves that you know that you read about as theoretical concepts you'll be put into practice so i'm going to get these poetry books and we are going to discuss it would you all be interested to talk about it yes, okay so ma'am we'll just yeah. get it yeah